Bone is my guys, know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side, CJ Ike, now I gotta roll with ice. All these brothers, my guys, know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side, CJ Ike, now I gotta roll with ice. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Paul with Spheric Reptiles. And of course you just heard Casey Bonnie. Um, today I will be doing a bioactive build. Well, I'll be starting a bioactive build because it takes a couple of days to do it. But I'll be trying to run through these steps as quickly as possible. Um, please let me know what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe. But without anything else, I'll get right to it. So just getting into it, I wanna kind of break down what I'm going to be making the bioactive and then I'll talk about the Stuff that I'll be using to create the background as well as the lighting. So um, to start off with, I got this 10 quart um, Reptor soil. Then I got this jungle mix from Zilla. You see it has the fur, the sphagnum moss and the peat moss. I got from the bio dude a 35 quart bio shock just to make sure that the uh, cleanup crew that I put in there has active in that area. I got a nice piece of ghost wood. I got a couple pieces of cork bark as well as one that I'll try to, try to incorporate into a hive. I got some more sphagnum moss in there for creating a human environment so I don't have to keep it super soggy. It's uh, less likely to, uh, I don't want to have to overwater it. Um, and then I got this plant right here, this golden pothos plant. You see that? I mean, it's very nice. It'll grow. And then of course, as it grows, you know, it's a plant that I can continue to keep and grow. And then I have this friendship plant right here. It's already a nice size. Um, to create some additional cover for the boa constrictor. Hopefully he won't destroy it. Um, I doubt it, you know, but either way, uh, this is what we got. So now I will move on into the other things that we have for this, for this build. For the actual construction of the background, I mean, I think I'm using some of the same tools I used before, but I have my, my caulking gun. I got some uh, silicone. I got paints right here. I have my grout sealer. I have my sand colored grout because I really want to just use an accent. This will be like a tree trunk type of thing. Um, of course, I got the drill and the mixing tool, the styrofoam back here, a can of great stuff to fill in all the gaps and a couple of paint brushes. Starting with this styrofoam that measures 12 by, and remember I got a 30 by 12 by 12. I wanna make sure that the styrofoam can fit in there. So I cut it at 29 on the length and I left it at 12. And this will make up my entire backing. I know a lot of the times you can't get one piece, but if you go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels or somewhere like that, you probably can find a uh, piece of styrofoam. But just to let you know what I'll be doing is this will be the, I guess, cross section of the tree, the tree trunk that'll be running this way. So I'll just have this little cross segment as a background. And just to get started, I'll just draw some lines of like bark down the center and I'll just kind of grade those in as I go. These will be my cut lines. And I'm trying to simulate the bark that I've seen in the areas like that, uh, that I'll shade in. Those are the areas that I'll be recessing because you know, bark isn't smooth. So this will have a multi-layered approach. So I'll just continue to draw these lines down there real quick. And you'll get to see the finished product here in just a second when I get done with this. Now that I've drawn out my tree bark, and I know that it kind of looks weird, but what I found out is if you do a rough sketch and after I put the grout on top and after I paint it and after I seal it, um, it'll turn out like Fred's enclosure. So if you want to see how Fred's enclosure looks, go to some of our previous videos and you can see that. But now I'm gonna go outside and actually carve this up and show you the additional tool that I think you need. Another tool that you'll need is a styrofoam cutter. I think that it's a really good tool to have. Um, definitely, you wanna do this outside because the styrofoam will be uh, toxic. So you wanna be in a fresh air environment to where you can get a lot of ventilation. But now you see I got this here and I got this. So what I'll be doing with this, and I'll just do a little bit and then I'll just get back with the end, is I'll just start scraping this through and you see how that just comes right off. And I'll trace all of my lines through here. And the styrofoam cutter just cuts right down through it like butter. 
I'm just cutting those in, kind of, and I'll round it off later with the heat gun. So, and you'll laugh at my heat gun because I kind of fucked up with some plastic. <laughs> but anyway, I'll finish this up and then that way you can see me use the heat gun on it. Okay, so now, now you see how it's carved out. I kind of went through and carved out all of these. Um, I was going to do more of this with the uh, styrofoam gun, but I'm going to use my ratty ass heat gun. I sat it on some plastic the last time I used it, a bucket, and it kind of carved into the bucket and left some plastic. But I'm going to use this with this little small tip to kind of shave down through there and get rid of some of the areas that I don't want. Uh, be careful with this. And you definitely want to use this outside too because of the ventilation issue. And just like that, I have my backing for my tree bark. Of course, that little area right there is there, but I'm going to cover it with grout sealer. But you can see how just by doing this that quickly, then now I got basically the shape of the tree bark. So it'll be up that way. And it's not going to be perfect, but the whole thing is to create some sort of natural background. Of course, this will be textured and it'll be sealed. So this will really be like a concrete tile after I'm done with it. All right, so the next step will be putting this inside of the glass aquarium, um, putting silicone on the back, and then I will use the grout mixture, which I'll come out and show you how to mix up the grout and cover this with grout with the paintbrush. And then I'll let all of this dry for 24 hours before I do anything else. First thing is I have to trim off some of this to make sure that it fit inside of here. So I just wanted to recheck that it'll fit. Of course, there will be soil down here at the bottom. Um, but this will fit right there and I'll use great stuff to kind of build it up to make sure that it stays back. I want to make sure it doesn't fall forward and hurt my animal at any point because I just like to use extra precautionary measures. All right, I know I, know I didn't show you, but I had to take the nozzle off. This is like the silicone from hell. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add silicone to this as good as I can coming out all weird. Now we we'll just put this inside. And press firmly against the glass. So you can see how it looks in there and up against the glass, you can see the smear spots in there to show that it's attached. Before I actually paint it, I think I'm going to great stuff some of this edge around the outside just to make sure that I got it sealed in properly. And I do put some great stuff at the end, at the bottom because I don't want for the cleanup crew or the animal to get up under there and get exposed to the styrofoam. That's on there pretty good. Normally I would say wear gloves with the great stuff, but I'm not gonna be touching this stuff right now. I'm gonna let everything cure and dry. So just shake up the great stuff. Really well, I'm using a red can of, uh, it's uh, Gaps and Cracks, great stuff. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's really cheap, or you can just buy it on Amazon or wherever you want. I'll just add it along the sides. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll use some of this leftover styrofoam to push it into the places where I want it. I think that'll work. So that's what we got for now, guys. I gotta let this dry. I'm gonna store it, store it like this. 
on the back so that it can make sure that it dries correctly. For this next step, I'll be just mixing my grout in. Um, I remember I got this from Lowe's. Drill attachment so I can mix up the, uh, the grout. This is dried overnight, so what I'll do is just carve some of this off. This bottom layer will be covered with dirt, so I'm not really worried about getting it clean. I just didn't want an area for the animals to be able to get into. Of course, I'll seal all of this, but now we will be applying our grout. This is the sort of semi product. That's after one application of the grout. So I try to get as many of the spaces as I could, but you know, I'm gonna put another coat on there. So I'll let this dry for about 10 to 12 hours and then I'll come back and put the other coat on there and let that dry overnight before I move on to the next process. So the grout has been sitting up for about eight hours now. I'm gonna go ahead and try to apply some of this other color since it's still drying. It doesn't seem like it's uh, falling off or anything like that. I did have to readjust some of the parts over here, I had to cut that because where I tried to trim the, the foam or the great stuff backing, and I saw that it was coming off. It was just a crack in there from where I had cut it. So I went ahead and removed that. So what I've done is I've mixed some different colors in here, some acrylic paints. And you can see that I have the, the lighter. I have like a maroon type color and I put some black in there to get that chocolatey color. And what I'll be doing is just going over the outside of the branches and I'll be leaving the insides of it the same color as the grout. So what I'll do here is I'll just go straight up. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect either. Just to mimic the outside of the wood. These are all short brush strokes, so to speak. Now that I've finished applying the brown kind of acrylic mixture, I'm going to now fill in those cracks just with some black acrylic paint so that it can stand out and look more like tree bark. So remember, this is supposed to be a cross section of a tree. So I'll do that and I'll just show you the finished product. So now I've added the black in and what I did was I just kind of bleeded it through. Like what's that dude named Ross, uh, the painter with the magic paintbrush? You know what I'm talking about? Well, y'all know who I'm talking about. Mr. Ross, the magic paintbrush dude. So that's where I got this from. So I painted with a base coat of basically a lighter brown and a darker brown with a little bit of black. And then I went back over it with uh, just black and I kind of bled it into the existing and you can see how it turned out. So now I'm gonna let this dry overnight. Um, it won't be till I get off work tomorrow and I'll just cover it with the grout sealer and I'll probably do two coats of that. And then we'll get on with the rest of the build and then, uh, you know, see how it works. All right guys, so now that it's dry, this is the most important part of the build here. And I will be using this 511 spray on grout sealer to just seal it. You know, I'll put uh, two coats over here and um, on top of it so that it can 
seal it and that way it'll stay hard and just like it looks right here. So let me get to it. Alright, I know it's kind of crazy since I'm holding my phone with my hand, but you know, you can see how wet it looks now. And what I'll do is I'll let that all dry overnight and just really seal and wipe up the excess. But I'll do this with this coat and then I'll go back and put on a second coat. And afterwards, we can get on to building a damn bioactive enclosure. So now that I've had a chance to put on two coats of the uh, grout sealer, I'm just waiting on it to dry. I think that's one of the most important things. I don't want you guys to get into a rush to get this completed. So it's very, very, very important for you to allow it to dry completely. Because if you don't, then you could actually have more problems than you would if you didn't. Um, in the meantime, I can clean this up. Uh, this, this build actually takes about, I'm gonna say seven days. But what I'm doing now is just scraping out the excess. Because it still smells, what I'm going to do is vacuum it out. Uh, vacuum out all the excess and then that way I can let it completely dry. Rework on this again this weekend. But I can still smell it a little bit and I just want to make sure that it's completely dry. Uh, the next step we'll be adding in all of the plant fixtures and things like that and the light and everything else and just trying to put it together. All right, now for the moment that everybody's been waiting for, I know I have, uh, yeah, this has taken about six days to get to this point and this is the point where I actually get to put everything together and just see how it looks. So let me get right to it. I'll be putting in a Zilla Jungle Mix, the Reptor Soil. I got some uh, pre-rinsed um, lump chart lump hardwood charcoal. I have my bio shot right here. I also have some sphagnum moss that I'll be mixing in. So I'll just go ahead and start right now, guys. Now I have my, it's an umbrella plant, plant. I got two of them. I'm gonna plant those, I cleaned off the roots. Then I have, actually, before I do anything else, I want to insert this piece of ghost wood. Hopefully it'll fit. I have to check this out and replant that somewhere else. Now I have my pothos plant. I think I'm gonna put this one right in the center. Well, before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and put my bio shot in there. It's big enough for a 36 quart. Just wanted to make sure I had enough. All right, I got enough to spare. So I'll be saving that for my next bioactive build. I'm going to put the friendship plant. We'll see how it does um, over in that corner or right here in the center. I think in the corner will be better.
right? Now just to give it a good water. So this will start out as a boa constrictor build, but I'm pretty sure that the way that it's being structured, that I can put some other things in there once it outgrows it. I just wanted it to have more of a naturalistic feel. Before I add anything else in, I want to just let you guys see what this looks like. So now I'll just be adding in isopods, but before I do, let me let you see those. So these are my pride and joy. So these are powder blue and powder orange isopods that I got at a show and was just kind of like, I think I can grow them. And you can go back and see the actual video that I did. But look at them, guys. Look at how prolific they are. They're everywhere. So I'm going to be adding these guys in with the boa constrictor so that if nothing else, you see how many of them there are. That's so cool. Um, that way it can be a really bioactive. And I got a springtail culture as well that I'll be adding in there. But you can just look at how they're running. They're just going crazy in there. Look, this crazy. So. I'll be adding those in and uh, you know, I'm gonna let them live. I'm gonna let them stay in there for about like two days or so, so they can get everything going, get used to the light that I'll be using overhead. And you know, we'll see what, what it, how it goes. So I just put the screen on top so that I could talk about the light that I'll be using. And I'll be using this Hyger light. And I got this off Amazon. And there's the exact name right there. Um, when I was looking at a lot of lights, one of the things that I wanted to make sure is I had a light cycle. So, and going with this is um, the perfect size for it is 22 watts, gives 1500 lumens uh, for 24 to 30 inch tanks. So that was why I chose this on Amazon. And of course, as always, I'll put a link up there so that you can actually find this if you'd like, or at least be able to find some other options. So if nothing else, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it up and you can see how it looks. Okay, so with this light, this is a really cool light. And I'm gonna show you some of the features it has as I turn it on. So this is an aquarium light. And the reason I got it is because I didn't want to have a humid environment where I'm growing plants and there's biodiversity going on, you know, a true bioactive enclosure and have it mess up the light. So in doing so, that's why I chose this Hyger light. Um, it's, it wasn't very expensive either. I think this one was around 50 bucks. Uh, so I'm just gonna discuss some of the features it has. So if I wanted to change the color, then you could easily change the color to red and you can see the different colors that it'll toggle through. I'm going to add some more features in there, like this piece of bark that the animal can either hide behind. I'll just set up a wall and it'll be in the back. So I'll do that right now. Let me remove this light. I wanna know what you guys think about this build. Um, I'm, of course, I've condensed the time down a lot, but I really want to I want to know what you guys think about it. And this will be my boa constrictors hide right here. Give them somewhere to hide the hot. The heat lamp will be right here, so it'll be right here and it'll be pretty close so that 
it can either get um, some heat or it can choose to get away. I'll leave it up to him. So, uh, and if that doesn't work, I can always put radiant heat panels or under tank heat in here, but I think the over, overhead heat lamp will work just well. So that's what we got for now, guys. I gotta let this tank settle in and acclimate. I gotta let the isopods do their work with the bio shot, as well as to see how the plants do. And in a couple of days, I'll be adding in KC Bunny. All right, guys, so for the final piece of the build, I will be putting our KC Bunny off into the enclosure. He's still a little pissed. I just woke him up this morning. He's always pissed, as we know. And of course, he is an IMG Hypo Motley Head VPI Pos Head Annery uh, RDR, so he's definitely a beautiful animal. He won't be able to stay in this enclosure for a long time since it's only a 15 gallon, but I thought that it's better than where he's at right now, so I'll just use this space um, until he actually gets big enough to be put into another space. So now is the uh, big introduction of Casey Bunny to his new home. Let's see if he even wants to go in there, right? I think I'll put him in there tail first. Now that he's in there, almost in there. He's definitely investigating. His new home. Try not try to keep him from coming out. <laughs> well, guys, the only thing I have to do is add the uh, the heat element to the top. I'm going to use a ceramic heat emitter. And it won't be, you know, aesthetically pleasing, but it definitely will be effective because it'll give him a a place where he can actually go and bask on the uh, ghost wood and on his hide. And then he has other ranges to where he can move to uh, regulate his body temperature. But if nothing else, guys, I hope that this build helps you help someone. If you can just help one person to improve the life of the reptile, then I feel like that's an accomplishment. Um, you know, a lot of people have helped me along the way, so I'm just trying to pass it forward. The more ideas we have, the better our uh, reptile culture will be. So um, if nothing else, guys, Thank you for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And enjoy the time that you spend with your reptiles and enjoy the time that you have with your family. Thank you.